And welcome back to WCCF Tech TV, everyone. This is Keith once again, and this is actually a viewer request video. See, somebody did ask in our original unboxing of and first look of the RTX 2080 and 2080 Ti, they asked for us to compare the cards using a an Intel i5 8600K as well as an Ryzen 5 1600. Well, we have a 1600X, so that's pretty much the same thing. And we had just gotten in an 8600K and that we picked up as well as an 8400 from Intel. And we want to take a look at all three of these chips because, well, they're all six cores. They're all somewhere in the same ballpark or the same pricing. Uh, somebody in the comments misunderstood the original question and asked, why would you compare it to an 8700K? They're in completely different price brackets. And I agree, they are. That's why we're not comparing those. And we're not even going to look at the eight cores. We're going to stick to strictly six cores and see where these chips line up. So we are testing for the Z370 platform. We are testing with the EVGA Z370 Classified K. And we're using the same RAM for all tests, but it's the Evo X 16 gigabyte DDR4 3200 kit. And they're running at the same clocks on the 8600K and the Ryzen 5, which let's run through that real quick. We're testing the Ryzen 5 1600X. It is running at four gigahertz across all cores on the MSI X370 X Power Gaming Titanium with the same memory. The i5 8600K is running at five gigahertz on its setup. As pertains to the 8400, we're actually running it not only on stock settings, so no multi-core enhancement, we're also running it with the DDR4 at its rated. Now again, the i5 8600K is running at five gigahertz the Ryzen 5 1600X is running at four gigahertz. The Intel chips, straight six cores. The AMD part, however, six cores with simultaneous multi-threading, resulting in 12 threads. We want to take a look at using the RTX 2080 Ti at 1440p gaming and see just how these three chips line up. So using the latest drivers and the latest builds of each game, let's take a look at the results. Starting things off with Hitman at DX12 1440p at the highest settings with SMAA. We're looking at a pretty much straight up domination by the 8600K thanks to its high clock rates. Even though this is DX12, it is still benefiting greatly from high frequencies. However, you can see the 1600X edged out the 8400 when it comes to averages, but fell slightly behind on the 1% lows, even though it completely owned it in the 1% lows. So very interesting takeaway there. Moving on to Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we see the 1600X and the 8600K coming very close to each other when it comes to averages. But again, the 1% or the 0.1% row lows rather are definitely beneficial from the higher core frequency of the 8600K. As we can see over on the 8400, it is left in the dust by these two chips in this game. Moving into Monster Hunter World, this game is fairly CPU intensive. It, it, it wants the CPU. Yeah, the more you got, the better it is. And that does go to show in how close the 1600X and the 8600K perform in this game showing again the i5-8400 trailing by a fair margin. Moving things over to Far Cry 5, a DX11 game that is decently CPU intensive, I guess you could say. Um, you do see that the 8400 edges out the 1600X on averages, but falls behind it when it comes to the 0.1% lows. And the 8600K carries the victory here by a hefty margin thanks to its higher frequency. Assassin's Creed Origins, just like Monster Hunter World, loves the cores and it loves the speed, but a combination of those can keep things pretty competitive, showing the 1600X barely behind the 8600K, but quite a bit ahead of the 8400. Moving along to Deus Ex Mankind Divided, we see here that, well, the core architecture is just preferred by the game. Even with the 8400, taking a sizable victory over the 1600X, even in the modern API DX12. Well, taking a look at the last game is Rainbow Six Siege. We see the 1600X and the 8600K sitting there neck and neck with the 8400 sitting marginally behind it. However, those frame rates are so high, I don't think anybody's really gonna care. So at the end of the day, what's the takeaway? Well, the 8600K is the clear victor across the, the games that we tested, mainly due to its high frequency. The core count definitely helps, but the, well, the lowest performer in the bunch being the 8400. So the 1600X is showing a bit of its uh, muscle here, I guess you could say. And if it were the 2600, which we, 
requested samples, but have got none. Uh, and well, it just is what it is. But it is showing a great showing here and is quite competitive. So it's gonna be up to you. It's gonna be a really hard, hard pick if you're in the market for one of these six core chips as to which one you're gonna go with. So we'd love to hear what you're running and what you're experiencing and would you buy either one of these? And if so, why? If not, why not? Either way, this has been Keith with WCCF Tech TV. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit the uh, notification bell so that we don't miss you in the next video.